And we are so excited to have another session on how to grow your personal brand with Peter Lamb. Peter's going to come up to the stage. Peter says his that he's a realistic optimist that helps creators in gaming and grow their personal brands so they can make a living doing what they love. And Peter's mission is to help content creators in gaming build strong brands with their direction through education, coaching, and management. And so with that, Peter, welcome. Hello. Hi. Hi. How's everyone doing today? Everything's uh, working with the audio and everything like that? We're we good? can hear you. Everything's good. Everyone's giving you some love and some hearts, so you're you're good to go. All right, perfect. Well, thank you, uh, first of all, for having me at this event. Like, the turnout's amazing, and this little field is super cute. So, <laughs> happy to be here. All right, uh, so, yeah, I'm here to talk about personal branding. I think it's something that is super important within this industry because personal branding to me, there are a lot of different definitions, but the one that I really am a fan of is by someone named Marty Neumeyer. And his definition of a brand is that it's a person's gut feeling about a company, service, or product. And so if we change it to the perspective of a personal brand, it's, bas it's basically a person's gut feeling about who you are, right? And the most important thing that I learned throughout my years of teaching personal branding and learning it myself is that it's not really about what you say you are. It's about who others say you are. And, you know, when you first hear this, I know it could be kind of scary for a lot of people because it's it feels like you don't have control over um, who you you know, who you are. Right. Because it's everybody else's perception about you. Um, but there are things that you can do to. Um, show people who you really are, and that's what branding is, right? The act of branding is how you communicate your brand to people. And um, I, I, I like this example a lot. It's like a person can say that they're like the nicest, you know, person in the world, right? But if that if there's another person that doesn't like you and they they think you're just uh, a really mean spirited person, um, maybe because of a misunderstanding, who knows, right? But it's just that's your brand to a lot of people. So that's why it's you can't really control um, anybody's like definition of you in their mind. You can only be yourself and do a lot of things, whether that's professionally, whether that's personally, and try to show up as your best self every day to um, let people understand who you are. And so I think that's really important. And that leads me into talking about storytelling. I think that's a super important aspect of personal branding. Um, it's it's how you tell your story. It's how people understand where you're coming from, what your values are, what your beliefs are, um, and, and who you are as a person. So when it comes to making content, uh, which is a lot of what I teach, or I, I work with a lot of content creators, um, it, it's about integrating that story, right? Where you started, and where you are now and where you're trying to head into the future, right? And so where I started, for example, is in esports production. And I worked with a lot of pro players. And, uh, you know, I love them because I'm a competitive player myself. But then I realized that a lot of them were kind of shy in their own right, or they were just trying to focus on being the best. And unfortunately, being the best at the game isn't, isn't enough. In, in this industry and so you really got to show yourself right uh so other people can know who you are and become fans of you and you become marketable so that's why i started on my journey um you know after covid to try to help professional players uh really show themselves in the best light to people build a fan base build a community and help them become more marketable and that led me to talking to more content creators figuring out that they had the same problems and that's why ultimately I decided to um, transition out of production and into education to helping people. And so you see with that very simple um, shortened version of my story, you could kind of get a sense of like where I'm coming from, why I'm doing the things that I do, who I do it for, and, and why it's important to me and, and the people that I'm trying to serve. Um, so and to, to do part of that is, is marketing, you know, I think. Um, Branding, a huge part of it is not only trying to like be yourself to the fullest, right? Wear what you like to wear and talk how you want to talk and, and be yourself fully. But then if no one can see that, then it's really hard for anyone to actually find you. And so that's kind of where marketing comes into place. 
something that's kind of interesting about marketing um, is that a lot of people feel uh, there's like a negative stigma with marketing. You know, it, it feels like to a lot of people pushing a message in people's faces. Um, and it just, you know, constant barrage of things, right? We see advertisements every single day. And so one of the other people that I learned from um, in his book, This is Marketing by Seth Godin, he's a, he's a really great marketer. He changes the definition to, to fit how he sees marketing. And it's, to him, it's the generous act of helping someone achieve a goal, right? You want to find the right people um, in order to support them however they can. So if you're trying to sell a product, for example, um, you want to sell it to the right people. And so when I'm watching traditional TV, right, when and you see ads, the commercial breaks, uh, there are a lot of things that pop up that aren't really relevant to me. And so what good marketing is, it's helping people find relevant things so they can figure out um, if they need it or not to solve uh, a problem, right? Whether it's like a literal problem, like I need a screwdriver to to, to fix something in a house, or if it's um, a more intrinsic problem, you know. So that's another concept that really ties well in with branding and what, what you're trying to do. So whether you're an industry professional where you're trying to, um, you know, it's hard for me to come up with examples, um, but if, if you're trying to do an activation, serving a specific community, uh, like the game hers does, it's like, how do we find the people that we're trying to serve and how do we help them? Right. And so that's marketing done right. And it's based all around their brand and what they do, what they believe in, and how they choose to achieve it um, and how they do things is all very um, in alignment. Right. Even the, the way that you speak to people, uh, whether you're speaking very fast or you're speaking very calm, the words that you use, all of that is surrounding your personal brand. And so, yeah, I hope. I hope you guys um, really, uh, I guess, like understand where I'm trying to come from. It's 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 a little um, t tough for me to do, to to speak like this because usually I'm I'm much better like like in a crowd of 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 uh, physical people. But it's really cool to see everybody in the crowd. So it's kind of like, you know, um, it's kind of like it's in person as well. So I'm a little bit nervous. But if anyone has questions, I would, uh, you know, I'd be glad to answer uh, any questions that anybody has. Um, you know, it's just because personal branding touches all aspects, and I know not everybody wants to do content. So I'm trying to be very careful to not make everything about content, even though it's uh, it's a really great communication um, device, I guess. You're finding this really helpful. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so let's just talk about some action items, right? Just while while questions come in. So what I see a lot of people who want to grow in the industry, whether it's in esports and gaming, um, or as a content creator, because I've talked to a lot of students too, is the first thing that I check is like their bio um, on Twitter. I'm on Twitter a lot, and I know some people may or may not like Twitter anymore, but for whatever social media platform you're on, and from now into the future, uh, even if LinkedIn, right? It's like looking at your picture and how you want to present yourself. Uh, are you smiling? Are you um, at a party somewhere? Are you with friends? The type of clothes that you're wearing, all of that gives off a very certain like type of vibe. Uh, you know, I, I used to have this profile picture and I was really happy. I got a Fujifilm camera for my birthday and I, uh, you know, I took a picture of myself in the mirror with it. And and that's when everyone started asking me um, who didn't know me. They're like, oh, are you a photographer? And <laughs> that's when I realized, oh, shoot, I, I messed up. Um, well, it, it's not a mess up, per se. It was a good learning lesson that like, oh, even what I show in my profile picture, right, gives off a certain vibe and, and makes people uh, feel a certain way about me. So I started getting a lot of these uh, requests saying like, oh, can you take pictures of this and that? And I was like, oh, wait, I'm not I'm not a photographer. So I had to change my profile picture. Um, I'm I'm kind of a goofy guy in person, and I like to smile a lot. I like to laugh. And and so when I tried taking a, a picture, a headshot before, and it was super serious, and I was like, that doesn't feel like me, you know? Um, and I don't want people to feel like I'm unapproachable. So uh, that's why, you know, I smile. And in the background, um, I try to keep it clean so it's easy for people to see, like, who I am. And I chose yellow because I think it's a very warm color. You know, so it's very intentional, right? Um, the banner on your profile, whether that's on... Um, 
YouTube has one too, Twitter, you know, if you're able to show off your humor, I know a lot of people like using banners for their humor uh, or just to kind of say a little bit more of what they're about, right? Like a tagline, uh, even having a tagline as, as corny it may sound to some people, it's really, really helpful. Um, and, and, you know, for me, it's like trying to help content creators make a living doing what they love because that's, that's really important to me um, by teaching branding and the business of what they do. And so I repeat that a lot. Um, a two word brand too. And so I put this in my profile on Twitter, a realistic optimist. And that's, you know, I think that it, it, it really represents who I am very well. I, I like being a very optimistic person, but I try to keep it grounded. Sometimes I, you know, I don't want to fly too far to the sun. Um, but you know, being optimistic, I think in, in this world right now where there can be a lot of negativity, it matters a lot to me. And so for people who, who optimism and having hope. Uh, matters a lot to them too. You know, I'm I'm trying to find my tribe, right? People. So, um, and then your bio is really important. So it would be like, what do you do? Who do you do it for? Because I I believe that everybody in the professional space, um, is trying to serve somebody. Is trying to help somebody. So even if you're a content creator and you're making like not even educational content, you're making entertaining content. It, it still brightens up somebody's day. And the content that you make surrounds usually a community, a game, a, a niche, even like cooking or cars, right? You still serve a specific type of community. So what you do, who you do it for, and why does it matter both to you and them? I think those are three really important points. If you go and, and check out your bios on, on, on any platform, if you have those three things, it creates a super clear picture of who you are and making sure that's consistent throughout every single uh, platform that you're on and how you speak in real life too. When I introduce myself, I also, you know, try, I try not to sound like a robot, but I, I throw these words in when I introduce myself. Uh, uh, so people can get a sense of who I am immediately and see if like, oh, do we click or not, you know? Uh, let's answer some quick questions. So what's a good platform to start on that's easy for first timers? I think it really depends on who you are. So if you're like a creative, right? And, um, you know, everything is like image base uh, or video base, right? So if you're like a videographer, um, it definitely be like YouTube and Instagram, actually Twitter right now, because I see that they're trying to double down on video content that can work well. Um, and, you know, especially if you're a designer, if you're a photographer, Instagram, I, I noticed while jumping in between scenes, um, there are sometimes I go, you know, you go to a gaming convention or you go into an anime convention or a creative convention. When you ask for someone's social media, you could kind of tell the area that you're in by by like how many times they go to one platform or the other. So when I was at PAX or TwitchCon, everyone's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll add you on Twitter. But when I was in like the anime scene with cosplayers, because a lot of their stuff is more visual, they would try to to add me on Instagram instead. So it really depends on uh, the audience that you're trying to reach and the content that you're trying to put out there. Uh, how do you represent, Jillian says, how do you represent your brand without following trends or should we as creators follow those trends to gain visibility? Oh, okay, so this is a perfect question because I know that not a lot of people, um, I, I wouldn't say not a lot of people, I'm not gonna generalize, but I, I do get the feeling that trend writing isn't necessarily everyone's favorite thing to do because it, it it sometimes feels that like we lack individuality um you know we lack our personality if we're all we're doing is just following trends and we've definitely seen a couple of those accounts before so i think trends <clears throat> excuse me are important because it kind of shows what's going on in the world right now and what's uh what's important to people but it's also just a part Right, like your, your, you as a person it follows trends all the time, whether that's in fashion, whether that's in music, um, whether that's the TV shows and stuff that you watch, but you're still a complete person. So for example, if you are a huge fan of Disney and the trend right now, uh, or a huge fan of Star Wars and the trend right now is the Mandalorian, then you know, talk about the Mandalorian, right? If the trend aligns with your brand and your audience, then yeah, follow it. But if it's something like, I don't watch basketball, sorry, basketball fans. <laughs> um, but if, you know, something about the NBA is going on right now, it's like super trendy and it's, uh, you know, everyone's talking about it. I, I won't talk about it because I don't, I don't have any knowledge 
or or interest um, in that space. So you you choose the trends that you do want to follow, and it's just a part of of your brand. And if you if you can't find alignment in it, then go ahead and talk about it. There's nothing wrong with following trends as long as you know the the I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but as long as there's alignment. Um, and you need that to gain to gain visibility, yes, but also to try to find your tribe. Uh, for gaming creators, is it better to use a logo slash art of our real face? I'm not photogenic. <laughs> I uh, I felt that way too. I think in my uh, in my early days, I, I used a um, you know a more stylized photo of myself, or I even used like an anime character that I felt like really represented me. Um, and I think it's fine to use a logo or art of your real face. I personally, um, because I like the human connection of seeing other people's faces. This is why this this whole crowd thing, this interface um, on the outdoor the theater is like really cool for me because I get to see people, you know, and it, it gives me a certain vibe about everybody, uh, all these wonderful people here. So even if you don't want to use a real photo, I think, yeah, using an a, a art um, of, your, of your real face helps out a lot because there's just something about you know, human connection, seeing somebody face to face, even if it is a stylized version of yourself. So, yeah. Um, facts. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that everybody's finding this helpful. Um, all the encouragement has really helped calm my nerves. And, and uh, you know, I guess we do have like 10 minutes left, maybe five minutes for the talk and then five minutes for Q&A. But I, I do want to talk about this. Uh, that's super important that I think may not be talked about enough in the space is is like leaning into uh you know your your vulnerabilities um you know as as a as a dude like i grew up um with other dudes around and they're like oh don't cry uh don't don't show your vulnerabilities don't show your weakness you got to be strong and stuff like that but i think it, it's even more showing of how strong you are by being able to show your vulnerabilities and being okay with it right i came up here i haven't really done a, a virtual talk like this in forever and so uh yeah i was scared <laughs> i was kind of shaking some of you have may maybe even heard like the shakiness in my voice um but being able to lean into that and and that's just that's just being human you know personal branding is is being human and um and being human means being scared and sometimes being scared and being worried is okay, okay because you can lean on to other great people who 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 will accept you for who you are and, and lean into the energy to help lift you up. Um, yeah. And I know in the industry, like this is something I'm really passionate about too. I talk to students about this all the time. There's a, there's a concept of like a zero sum game. Um, it, it's, it's basically saying that like if one person wins, the other person has to lose. And in my belief system, um, I don't, I don't think that's, that's necessarily true. I feel like everybody can win. Everybody can eat. You know, and so when when you do anything, um, making sure that other people are taken care of too will like help you out. So, and I'm trying to tie this in for with like your professional um, careers or even your career as a content creator. Like, sure, there are traditionally competitors in the space, right? People who may be gunning for the same job or people who are also a creator who has the same niche in your space. But there are ways to collaborate with people and lift each other up. And even if you might not get the job, if you help another person, um, it, it will come back. I, I believe in karma too. It will come back around to to help you out too. So just, and that shows, you know, what you're willing to do. Um, I know a lot of people may want to come in and, you know, try to climb up and be the best at whatever they do. When there's nothing wrong about that. But when you when you do it in a way that like steps on other people, um, you know, well, when I say you, I don't mean anybody in this crowd. <laughs> but but when when people do do that, like they notice, you know, people take notes. Um, they don't they may not talk about it, but people talk and they take notes. And um, I I know that that's where you you realize like what part of the crowd that you want to be in, um, because it's like oh these are my type of people, you know. So yeah, uh, your authenticity, authenticity about being nervous on this platform is so inspiring. Thank you for sharing it. It's hugely motivating. Oh, well, you're you're very welcome. Yeah. So I guess um I'm up for any more questions. I'm up here for like eight more minutes. Uh oh, wait, we have someone. Oh, that's that's Verda. Verda. I'm just hi, Verda. I, I'm here to say hi. How are you? This has been hi. so awesome. I wanted to awesome. see if anyone wanted to. 
question. Come up on stage and ask, yeah. ask it. Let's let's do that. <laughs> I love I love questions. Um, Murphy's a question apparently. If you have any questions yourself, I I would love to to answer it, or we could have a little back and forth for the last few minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I really appreciated one the authenticity um, and vulnerability, which I think is hard for people to lean into. So, do you have any um, tactics for people to do that? Right, like. What is it? How do you do that on your social media or for your personal brand strategies? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. This helps out a lot. So when I first started this journey, I tried to be the person that like knows everything because I did not want to seem um, like a fraud in front of people. I didn't want to seem stupid in front of people, meaning I didn't want to I didn't want to make mistakes on social media. Right. It feels like everyone's watching you. And that just made me come across as a robot. <laughs> Every once in a while, uh, if I have like information that I learned from reading a book or watching a YouTube video, because that's honestly all I do, or listen to podcasts, I would share it in a very straightforward format that's just informational, straight up information. Um, and I realized that sometimes that, yeah, it, I still come off as like a robot, but I, I've learned that the things that impact people the most um, that I've seen, like real impact, not like social media metrics or engagement, but real impact is when I do talk about my story. And so if you have something that you want to share and you want to build expertise in it um, and you want to become a resident expert, right, and teach other people, um, you know, it, it, it's one thing to share what you've learned and your sources like I did with Marty Neumeyer um, or, or um, Seth Godin or even my mentor Christo from the future. Um, but it's another thing to do those things first and then share your experiences, um, the ups and the downs, right? A lot of people say that social media is like just a highlight reel of your best moments. And I think it should also be a highlight reel of your lowest moments because that's where the real learning lessons come from. That's where the growth comes from as well. And so when I share information now, I try to tie a story, a personal story into it. And if not somebody else's story um, so that people can latch onto that and, and find relatability in the information on like how to improve, how to make content, how to build business fundamentals. Um, Cause everybody has a lesson um, and everyone still can learn. Thank you so much for that. It's so true. And it's, and it is a hard thing to do. Um, so if there was one thing that you want to leave everyone that's here in this outdoor theater with before you were to leave, what would that be? And also how can they find you? Hmm. I think on the topic of personal branding, it's a huge, it's a huge like self-reflection exercise. Um, every single day. If you really want to grow your personal brand and lean into it and find a community, a tribe of people and make like big impact in the world, uh, or not even in the world, like maybe in a community of five, 10, you know, a um, hundred people, right? It, it's it's reflecting on yourself every day and, and understanding like, what are my values? Um, who do I like to hang out with? What are the brands that I like to collaborate with? Who do I want to help out? And when you reflect on yourself, um, you know, I do it every day. I don't know how tiring it gets to, to, to be reflective, but you know, that's probably the biggest um, tip I can give to people to, to take away from this is just by like writing everything down on a piece of paper and and trying to figure out okay if this is what i want out of life and this is how i want to leave this earth um uh, for the people that are that are still here uh what can i do and how can i help so that's that's probably the the biggest thing that i have and if people want to find me uh you can find me mostly on twitter um at Xenos King, X E N O S K I N G, uh, or you could just type in Peter Lamb, and I'm pretty sure I'll pop up. You can find a, you know, my my picture with the yellow background. Um, Twitter is where I'm most on, and I'm gonna be starting to ramp up content soon to to teach what I know and share my stories uh, on YouTube, and that's YouTube.com/slash Hansei G G H A N S E I G G. So yeah, thank you very much, Verda, for having me. Thank you very much, 
um, the gamers for having me part of, be part of this professional boot camp and sharing uh, my story and my knowledge with all these wonderful people in the crowd. I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity.